By special request, I'm going to show you my settings for the V squeegee and how we lay down some white ink. Coming up. Welcome back everybody. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Let's dive right into this tutorial, shall we? Now that I have my screen all lined up on press, I'm gonna take my squeegee, install it on the press, and then I'll show you the angles that is my preferred settings. Or is it that are? Uh, country talk, country talk. All right, gang, so here we are. Here's my squeegee. So just take note of where these are, and I'm gonna explain it here in a moment. So this lever basically raises and lowers the carriage. That way you can get your squeegee in and out. And I am using a 80, excuse me, it's a 70, 90, 70 durometer squeegee. It still has the softness of the 70 durometer, but has some strength to it so it doesn't flex a whole lot. And for me, that works really well in clearing the white ink through this mesh. I am using a 195 mesh. And the reason being is I, I tend to use a higher mesh count in order to get a softer print, yet I still get a bright print, but I'm not building up a ton of ink. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my squeegee in the carriage and put my pin in so we're all nice and secure. Now, the, the first thing to these settings, as far as what I like, is I'll lower my squeegee all the way down towards where it just bottoms out. And then I'm going to tighten up this lever here, which is the one that secures the carriage from it going up and down. So now we're all set. I'm gonna move my squeegee back a little bit because I want it to, I basically have a piece of tape under here that will keep the squeegee during the printing process. You got print on and as your, your palette comes up, this will tend to rock back and you can have your palette stick to the screen and pull up some of your emulsion. So I tend to put a piece of tape under there. So I'm just gonna roll this back, kind of rock it back, secure this into place. We have three handles here, right? This one raises and lowers the squeegee. We got that one nice and secure. We got it all dropped down. Now this first one is for your print angle. And as you can see, the block bumps up against this little barrel right here. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that this is all the way down towards the front and I'll secure that down. So that way I'm getting the most straight up and down angle as possible. Now as far as the, the flat angle, you'll have to kind of adjust that by your, your own preferences, but I tend to put this right at about the middle. Sometimes, depending on how long your squeegee blade is, you may be a little bit towards this side or that side of the center. In other words, the further this thing is towards this direction here, the less flood angle you're gonna have because it's, it's gonna stop it. So at this point, we're not gonna be able to flood anything. And all the way at the back, you're gonna get a really great amount of a flood angle and what that is going to do is it's going to press down the squeegee into the mesh and that can be an issue when you have a flashback going underneath it and it pressing the actual screen down towards the flash itself. So what I'll do is I'll put it somewhere in between and then I'll adjust it once I got ink in there depending on how well it's flooding or how much it's actually pressing down into the actual screen itself. I'll adjust that, but I tend to go up just a touch above the middle because that seems to flood the ink the best without putting too much pressure down onto the screen itself. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. So the ink that I do like to use is Wolflex's Epic Amazing Bright White. It is very creamy, it goes through the screen really nice and I don't have to add any reducer and produces a really opaque print. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and load my screen up with some of this ink. 
So I'm going to take my ink, I'm going to give it a good stir, and I'm going to put a sufficient amount, and I don't want to press it down into the image area, because what that will do is essentially make you deposit more ink than necessary on the first pass. And it will take a few passes just to clear your image up and to make it actually print right. So this is enough ink for starters. You guys will notice with the V squeegee, as you do tend to print, the ink will collect at the back of the V squeegee just by the action of it being up like this and the ink just kind of dropping down behind it. So that's something to keep in mind and to keep an eye on your ink, load it up as necessary, take your as we have here, and I'll leave a link down in the description where we got these. Every few dozen prints, I'll actually take my spatula and scoop some more ink back up behind the squeegee. But this is good for now, so I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to flood up my ink. Or flood up my screen, excuse me. Now we're pretty much ready to go. We just want to make sure that we have the, the squeegee essentially has ink on both the front and the back, so that way it's not pulling the screen towards the back, you don't want to dry screen because it can throw your registration off. Alright, so at this point we really haven't talked about the pressure knob, right? How I like to go about adjusting the pressure knob is I'll just take a shirt, just any old rag, place it onto the palette, and then I'm going to move it underneath my screen. So at this point we are going to turn the print on which will turn our squeegee on. And one of the things I want to keep an eye on is how much the back of this blade is actually pushing down onto, you can see my hand here, how much it's pressing down onto the screen. It's pressing just a little bit, just enough towards where it's going to actually flood my ink and it's not pressing the actual screen down too much. Now, if I hit table up, what that will do is it's going to rock the squeegee forward and you can see just how much pressure that I have here on the actual squeegee itself. I think we're just about in the ballpark, but I'm going to go to the other side and adjust it a little bit and do it by fill. Not only that, we're going to do it by fill and we're going to take a look at how well it is actually clearing our print. So at this point, I'm happy with my flood angle and we're just going to make sure that we have a good amount of pressure down. We don't want too much towards where it's going to actually push the ink down through the shirt and onto our palette. So I generally, once I set this, I, I set it and forget it because all of my squeegees are pretty much the same. But I'm going to do this just for the sake of demonstration. So I'm backing it up. You can see the squeegee blade is getting a little straighter, right? But we want a little bit of tension on it as you adjust your knob and one of the things you can pay attention to is the gap between this block and then this stop barrel right here is sometimes you can get it to separate a little bit I mean if you're using a 70 durometer squeegee this definitely will separate but you don't want it to curl up so much towards where you're using the flat side you still want to use that edge and have it curl up just a touch towards where you're putting enough pressure down to clear the screen. So once it starts getting a little tight, that's when I, I use that as my basis and then we'll see how it does. And you can kind of see my angle here where the squeegee is bent up just a little bit like so. However, it's using the edge of the blade. Here is the, the other edge right there. So it, it is using this edge down here to actually shear off the ink rather than using the, the flat side of the squeegee to smash it through. You want the shear through. Okay, so at this point I'm going to turn my flash on and I'm going to make sure it is in print flash print mode or you can do it in print flash print flash mode. And when I table up and table down on the press, we have our flash coming out. So that way we can do some test prints and see where we're at. We may initially turn off the auto flash, 
just to allow this to do a couple hits in manual mode and completely clear the screen. We might do three hits just to clear it and then we'll do a flash and then after that we'll do, we might, we may do a hit on the flattening screen and then do another couple prints on top just to show you how this white comes out. I'm using a water-based palette adhesive. I'm going to use a little bit of just water in a spray bottle. I'm getting a little low in my water but it's just a regular spray bottle. I'm going to take our scrub brush. Yeah, excuse me, that just fell on the floor. Get all the excess lint up and then we're going to swing it underneath the flash and let it flash a couple times so that way it's nice and tacky. Our palette's all nice and warmed up. It's tacky. We rejuvenated that water-based tack. Now I'm going to take a scrap t-shirt. I'm just going to load it onto the press. Make sure my t-shirt's nice and flat. We're going to put it underneath the press. And then we're going to the print a couple times just to make sure we clear the mesh. And I'll show you guys what to look out for. With the press in manual mode, I'm going to hit the manual button and I'm just going to go ahead and let this hit a couple times and see where we're at. Okay, that looks like it cleared pretty nicely. I'm going to give it a little bit of a close-up. Looks like the mesh cleared pretty nicely. It is our first couple of prints, so the ink is still flowing through the mesh after doing a test print, another test print after this, if your ink is not completely clearing, you may just want to add just a touch more pressure and see how that works out for you. But I think at this moment, we might hit it just one more time to see how it's doing. It looks like it cleared really nicely. Now let's take a look at our print. So here we are, here is our print. Everything looks like it cleared nicely. It's a fairly bright white print for the, the first base hit without any kind of flash or anything like that. Looks nice and clean. None of the, the edges are blurring or, or anything like that. And that's because we didn't put, we didn't mash our ink through so everything's nice and sharp. So at this point now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash this and then I'm going to send it underneath my flattening screen just to mash down some of these fibers and then we're going to hit it again and see how it looks. Alright, our base is nice and flash and we're going to go ahead and send this over to the flattening screen. Now we're going to want to send this print over nice and hot over to the flattening screen so I'm going to table up real quick and then table down, let my flash go over the print and then I'm immediately going to go over to my flattening screen and we're going to go ahead and hit that with a really hard durometer squeegee. I'll hit that one more time. Sometimes you can just do it once and it's just fine. Most of the time that's what we do, but I'm going to hit it twice for the sake of this demonstration. This is a 90 durometer over here on the other side. Now we're going to rotate this back over to station one with our white and we're going to go ahead and hit that again. Generally I would do this kind of print with two white screens. That way I can hit with the flattening screen and then print that white on top. You can do a print flash print kind of situation but this will make for a better quality print having two screens for your white. 195 for the base, 230 for the top print. Hit it with the flattening screen you'll have prints as smooth as butter. And as you can see, we've cleared our screen really well. Everything's completely cleared. Now let's get a close-up. And here we go. Here is the final print. It is a very bright white. Even for a 195 mesh doing this, I can actually see some of the texture here in the t-shirt. We got ourselves a nice flat print and our client would be absolutely happy with this. 
As you guys can see, you may notice that we do have registration marks. So this is going to be a four color print, which we're doing for a client. But while I had it set up, I wanted to show you guys how we go about doing our white base, our settings for our V squeegee, and then just kind of explain if this were just a single color print just like this, we would use two screens. And keep an eye out for a future video. I'm going to do a separation video and show you how this print turned out. So be sure to subscribe, click the bell icon so that way you get notifications and you'll see how this print came out. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this tutorial was very helpful for those of you out there that do have a V squeegee style tough workhorse automatic press and hopefully this will get you closer to solving your white base or your white screen printing woes. Until next time, whoa, we'll see you guys later. What am I talking about woes? That just sounds silly. Even though it's proper, I don't know.